The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. It is no substitute for professional care by your doctor or your qualified health care professional. Never disregard or delay professional medical advice because of something you've heard on this podcast or in any linked material. Guests who speak on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Shirley neither endorses nor opposes any particular opinion discussed on this podcast. The views expressed on this podcast have no relation to those of any academic, hospital, practice, institution, or other entity with which Dr. Shirley may be affiliated. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty. This podcast is curated by Dr. Shirley Medea, MD, as the definitive source of holistic wellness through beauty. The Forever Fab podcast values truth and authenticity. We encourage our guests to show up exactly as they are, as the best version of themselves. Please note, this podcast episode contains adult language. Thank you and enjoy. This week's episode is dedicated to partnership. The topic of this week's episode is It's Just Chemistry, Creative Collaborations in Skincare. Welcome to my interview with Gloria Liu and Victoria Fu of Chemist Confessions. I love that name. I love that name. And you know what? I said, ladies, that I wasn't going to read your epic bio, but I'm going to (laughs) because it's it's amazing. So I am going to read it to our listeners. So Chemist Confessions is a platform that was created by Gloria Liu and Victoria Fu to bring transparency and increased accessibility to the skincare space. With their respective degrees in chemical engineering, Victoria's from the University of California, San Diego, and Gloria's from Cornell, they both independently secured a career in the beauty industry, lo and behold. After deciding that neither wanted to pursue a career in traditional engineering, that's pretty bold of you ladies, but congratulations, they both, <laughs> they both separately were granted positions as skincare chemists at L'Oreal, oh, where, <laughs> right? where seren- serendipitously they met as cubicle mates. After much thought and consideration, they decided to leave L'Oreal to collaborate together on what started as a modest Instagram account, I think first with your cat, Gloria, right? Yes, correct. (laughs) (laughs) And has now developed a robust following with over 145,000 followers, myself included. (laughs) Chemist Confessions is an evolving multiverse where Victoria and Gloria are growing and expanding their own skincare line while continuing to provide their audience with educational and creative content through a blog and a recently published book, Skincare Decoded, which is available on Amazon.com. How'd I do? Oh, Oh, that was so nice. (laughs) So many times and I feel like by all means, if you'd like, we'd like to have you on to do that intro every time. <laughs> no problem. We'll have, the, one of, we'll have the one of one team, you know, just record me saying that and you can just, you know, hit play and yeah. pause it. You know, yeah. Yeah. And I Welcome. also love that, you know, our first names and last names rhyme and it gives me like a sense of glee seeing that people like I can see them connect that. They're like, isn't that weird? I'm like, that's not... <laughs> Well, not I, I have to tell you, when I first read it, I was like, oh, some people might get caught up with that. But um, right. But how yeah. beautiful is it that the two of you are together, your friends, you're collaborating, your business partners. So it's you can almost say if it doesn't offend you, you know how they tend to put celebrity couples together like uh, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know, celebrity couples, but it, you could be Fulu. Well, Lufu. <laughs> hey, Lufu. there's a new, there's a Fulu in town now. Fulu's in town. Ow. I mean, that's a brand in and of itself. But what else? I mean, hey, you have. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Time to get some swag. I'm ready. Get, war, get some swag, girl. <laughs> so welcome, Gloria and Victoria. Congratulations on all of your success. Thank you for becoming beautiful members of the fabulous forever fab community thank you for your time oh, man. Well, thanks, thanks for, for having us, us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely so shall we get into some juicy questions sure let's get started all right let's get it so what did 
And by the way, either one of you could answer, both of you could answer. We have as much time as you're willing to allow. So any question is open to either or both of you. I will just what? look at Victoria blankly if I don't want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> what did you love about studying chemical engineering? Ooh. <laughs> I come from a family where um, a significant number of my cousins are engineers, whether uh, mechanical, computer, mm -hmm. electric, uh, all of it. And there was a time during my early studies where they were trying to convince me to go into engineering. But there was something about that graph paper with the little square boxes. And I had to get like every letter or every digit in those boxes. I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I need cool. freedom to create. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I think my honest answer was I was really lost when I first went into college. And engineering is one. They, in freshman year, they give you an illusion of choice. Like, oh, the world's your oyster. You can take whatever path you want. And then you yeah. realize that each engineering discipline is so tight. You you can't switch majors very flexibly. So yeah. once you start, even freshman year, you get really locked into a track. And me, being a commitment phobe, chose chemical engineering because it sounds like it opens at least a few more doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there are plenty of chemicals in the world, right? You can play with Correct. all of them. There's a lot of different specialties you can go into. Yeah, and actually, I had a different take because I switched out and went into chemical engineering because ah. I was in a bioengineering pre-med track, and I realized, oh, holy cow, I do not <laughs> want to go down the med the medicine route. And, yeah, um, yeah. I but to answer your question, I think for me, um, it actually led me to doing research, mm -hmm. and um, the that was probably like my favorite part about um, yeah. just college was being able to shadow and learn and be able to do research on my own. And I got to actually do some of that specialized in acne and I have cool. dealt with acne all my life. So I think having that kind of correlation, being able to apply it, you yes. know, what you're learning, all that, you know, not, not any of the classes, not courses. It was just that <laughs> being able to do that was the nice thing. Um, doing my degree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got well, my ass kicked for all my time. Yeah. That's so what I was like, a, a, lot the, a lot of the memories <laughs> ass kicking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Brilliant. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's absolutely right. But, um, neither one of you look as if you ever suffered from, um, acne, but I love that in your, um, both of your bios on your website, you include your skin type and what some of your skin issues are. I think that's absolutely brilliant and very transparent and open and real and universal. So congrats on that. Yeah. Now, I'll, you. I'll, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is somewhat related to that first question. There is a method behind some of my madness. But although mm -hmm. it is an indirect route, how do you feel that chemical engineering or engineering in general prepared you or equipped you for a career as beauty formulators? Ah. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think it's uh, kind of what we said, like got your ass handed to you for all these years. You learn to be resilient and you learn to be resourceful in terms of hunting down answers. Because uh, the reality is no matter what field you go into, beauty, oil, um, even like materials, all of these come with a lot of learning on the job. Because yeah, they, yeah. You, the more you work, you're just always a student, right? And I think... Yes. Um, our degrees really prepped us for that life. It's just like, okay, I don't know the answer right now, but that's okay. I'll go figure it out. I also think engineering kind of gave us that component to see long-term, like the entire project timeline. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when you're just thinking about the formula as a chemist, like you're only seeing like what's on the bench. But as an engineer, you're, I mean, we've had to learn how to look at like distill columns, things like that. Think about like how to scale and, the, just that kind of mindset, I think, um, gave us kind of a more well-rounded picture on mm -hmm. how to get, like, your formula onto the shelf of, you know, a retailer. So things like that. Um, just a broader perspective on the entire job. Dr. Shirley. Dr. Shirley, <laughs> come back. I'll be yeah. back. <laughs> I mean, damn, that happened fast. I was just like, yeah. it usually happens after like half an hour, 40 minutes, but it's only been like five minutes. <laughs> I will say this time you're a lot clearer. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to repeat your answer unless Fela did um did Gloria completely cut off or did I just cut off? Yeah, it was just you. 
<laughs> life goes on without me. Story of my life. Fine. So I'm glad. Okay. So next question. We're able to pick back, back up. That's wonderful. What was your intention for creating Chemist Confessions? Yeah. I mean, I think for us, it was a Hail Mary because we thought, hey, I think we're going to be leaving this industry entirely. Um, that feeling paired with um, kind of a general sense of when we were chemists, the thing we realized it is super confusing mm -hmm. trying to buy a skincare product. Yeah. And we ended up becoming like go-to people like with our friends and family of, hey, should I buy this product? How do I, how do I choose, you know? And we realized it's like, it, it shouldn't have to be so hard. And, and the marketing and all of the advertising oh, yeah. and everything, it doesn't help, right? Yeah. Um, so the, just those feelings um, really culminated to us like saying, hey, if we shared our chemist insight, if we shared about how like, hey, we know formulas, we know like the ingredients, what it takes to get it into a nice pretty formula in the packaging and it's safe, it can be effective, how to get on the shelf. If we can share that, can it help the consumer shop for a better product, you know? And we didn't know if at the time, if they would even be interested in listening to kind of our, you know, skincare science, a little bit more technical lingo, you know, would that be off-putting? But yeah, we were surprised. And thanks to Gloria's cat and our kind of weird <laughs> humor, I think it, uh, <laughs> It kind of had a good let us hear, yeah. yeah. That is fantastic. I have to tell you, I shared similar um, concerns with you because there is a small segment of this podcast that I call 15 Minutes of Fab. And in those 15 minutes, I take some product that's in my vast, enormous beauty product collection, mm -hmm. and I grab it, and I use it, obviously, or I have used it for a long time, or I use it for a few weeks, and then I do a, a podcast on it, 15 minutes review. And mm -hmm. I talk about obviously the name, I go into detail about the ingredients and then I give it a, a, what I call a fab score. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I keep thinking, nobody is interested in knowing the nitty gritty about skincare products, but I'm glad you've proved me wrong because I do think it's important. Mm -hmm. and, and I do think the consumer appreciates it as you know a testament to your success and the fact that you have all these followers. People want to know, women yeah. want to know. They also are, it's incredible how much work they're willing to do to learn. Right. You know, we're, yeah. we're often surprised by just how much reading people do, the questions oh, that yeah. they come up with. They are, some of them are just, they're on another level of detail. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's awesome. Which is cool. Which is cool. Yeah. Our post started out with, along the lines of like, glycerin is hydrating. And now we have to get into like, lay Studies. it out. Here's a study. How is it 50 studying? women in this study. Placebo yeah. controlled. Double blind. Yeah. Randomized, <laughs> double blind, placebo controlled, yeah. meta-analysis. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes my posts are just like, new study reveals. And people are like, mm, what's that mean? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I totally get it. But thank you for doing it. Because I do think um, knowledge is power. And certainly, you know, different levels of knowledge are even more empowering. So thank you for that. So you obviously felt that the industry needed some transparency, right? So coupled with, you know, ingredient and product education, and you obviously think that that's important. Do you think what you're doing, meaning the values that you have, um, do you think that distinguishes you from or your brand from others? Um, I mean, we believe that. I mean, why else would we be doing this? Um, at the same time, I think it's um, it's um, to me almost like an open uh, open invitation because the mm -hmm. reality is um, there's like all these different movements in in the skincare world. Um, yeah. If more people buy into our value, uh, if more brands want to be more transparent, I think that co uh, that collective is much more powerful. And yeah. I also think that. Um, we are in a unique space that it's now winner take all kind of yeah, thing because yes. people's type preference is so incredibly diverse. I think it's a yes. lot of, um, you know, we think there is a very, um, there's a technical black and white to what counts as a good product, what counts as good product development. Um, but in terms of that execution and your take, your variances yes. on it to answer different um, people's demands, I think is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yes. 
I would agree. And everyone's different, right? What might be yeah. good for my skin type may not be good for yours or Fela's or anyone else. So it's true that the beauty space does offer that benefit because, you know, there's a shoe for every foot. There's yeah. a moisturizer for every face. Yes. <laughs> now describe your process of decoding for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, so you know, every product has the inky, the ingredient list that lists all, you know, all the ingredients that's put into the bottle. And the idea for us in decoding is not to maybe understand it on a chemist level, but at least familiarize themselves with certain ingredients. Um, one of them being the actives, which one of them are actually going to work for you and doing all those nice, giving you those nice benefits that you're looking for. Um, yes. The other category we might look at are things like preservatives. So a little bit of a can of worms topic, but actually trying to understand which preservatives might be giving your skin trouble would be mm -hmm. one very good way to start troubleshooting and kind of especially helping those that are feeling a little lost or feeling yeah. like skincare isn't designed for them, you know. Yeah. And then the other, I think this, you know, there's there's all sorts, you know, moisturizing ingredients. Um, incredibly underrated, you know, mm -hmm. finding that balance of moisturizing ingredients is really important because it turns out that there are different categories of moisturizing ingredients that do different things. So it's kind of that hopefully that gives you a kind of a sense of how we like to focus on the ingredient list and how people yeah. can think about it. Yeah. I agree 100%. When my patients come to ask me, oh my God, I went to Sephora or Ulta or whatever, and I just could, I was overwhelmed. I didn't know what, right? uh, yeah. what I could use. Yeah. Uh, the first thing, and frankly, the most important thing that I go to is the ingredient list. And then I, you know, sort of discern and distinguish and dissect it uh, from there. But yeah, I agree. So thank goodness that you're doing this. And I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now, when great. the two of you are collaborating and um, considering starting um, a new product or creating a new product, how do you collaborate with each other? Is Gloria, <laughs> do you? Yeah. <laughs> What's the story? Uh, we are very, very whimsical right? in our approach. Um, our first set of products was, was a line of moisturizers. Mm -hmm. It was shockingly easy to come up with the concept and the core ingredients we want to put into it. Um, yes. So the, the unifying theme across the whole line is soothing ingredients. We want, and we feel like, we just felt like it was such an important category of ingredients, but it's also the most kind of abused category of ingredients a lot of products will claim it and mm. i mean based on our chemist background and decoding <laughs> ingredients, a lot of it's in there at what we call a cat sneeze worth so for us it's all right it's a line of products where we don't consider how much it costs to make the, uh, the actual formula and we just <laughs> yes. dump in an actual effective level of what we think are the soothing ingredients that have the most um data behind it yeah. yes. um and then we we divvied it up based on uh, ingredient types. So we have a water-based humectant. We have, you know, emollient for face oil, and we have an occlusive, and then uh, all a simple, uh, well-rounded moisturizer, all based on the same ethos. So in terms of product development, it's relatively straightforward. I happen to have dry skin. Victoria has oily skin. So it's a formula that, um, that does strike a balance where depending on how you use it, um, people across like the dry oily yeah. spe spectrum can kind of take from it. Yeah. I was thinking that depending on how you use it is like mm. probably one of, I would say uh, our prouder moment. Yeah. My proudest moment for us is that um, trying to really think about the user mm -hmm. and how many types of users there are out there. There's yes. ones that are so okay with layering and there are ones that are so not okay. They want it to keep it as simple as possible. And right. I think we really try to make sure um, each formula can be used in multiple ways mm -hmm. um, yes. for multiple users. And they're going to know about it. Like we spend a lot of, uh, we do a lot of work making sure that the user, when they get the product, they're fully educated on how many ways they can try to use this product for certain situations. Um, and really just kind of give the control back to the consumer because a lot of times consumers are kind of, they're looking to what brands to tell them how are they supposed to use this in their routine. Yes. But at the end of the day, the user is the one that knows their skin best. They know their routine history. Shouldn't they be the ones to make that judgment call? So instead, let us give you tools that 
um, can be used in X, Y, Z ways. And then for those scenarios, like you are the ones to dial it in any way that you need it to be. So that was for us, like as chemists, like what is our fundamental goal? It's like creating formulas that really can work for them in multiple aspects, you know, and really yeah. just go to work for them, right? So, yeah. No, so you're not only providing tools in the form of products, you're actually also providing education. So they go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, when you are creating, let's say um, you, you obviously have your line of products currently, but let's say you wanted to do something different. Where do you get inspiration for creating a new product? Do you travel to Morocco and go, oh my gosh, I want to use Moroccan, <laughs> Moroccan rose oil or, oh you know. Gosh. Gloria's gonna right? put in the project proposal. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, we're gonna need a budget. I'm, I'm stealing good vibes from Fiji. Right, <laughs> no, right? There's a really special flower, you know, yeah, in the Maldives. I'm kind of just seeing myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> funny you said that, and I think we uh, we take a lot of inspiration from uh, our both our our community and the research we do to kind of do the content. Um, because of the content piece, I think we always have to stay ahead of the new science, what's come out. Um, and yeah, we, it kind of usually starts with the active ingredients in terms of what core active we think haven't been done right or haven't been done in this angle. And we try to think about it in that perspective and start putting putting together a brief. And then it goes into a well, right? Like I said, I think after the <laughs> core core technology has been yes. uh, decided yes the two of us are like just running in like four <laughs> different directions like oh what about this okay let's yeah. Try. Yeah. I was gonna say it's like yeah a yeah yeah, yeah. the two of us like what about this and she's like yeah. oh, what about this yeah <laughs> and it, after sounds, that, okay, great. <laughs> it sounds like it's a beautiful process full of kinetic energy and then you're able to you know bring it all together now what is the hatchery Oh, oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Oh, <laughs> I do my research too, ladies. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so the hatchery is our product incubator. Um, oh. It involves our followers, customers, just anyone that wants to get involved in product development and be part of that process. Um, Super cool. Or I mentioned we are just two skin types, you know, yeah. and so... I realize like the best way is to have the people who support us um, also test out these formulas that we are kind of in the midst of creating. So we've actually had two products um, mm -hmm. run through that. Um, one was the cleanser and then the other was our gentle acid booster, our chemical mm -hmm. exfoliant booster. Um, mm -hmm. The cleanser, because we found cleansers to be incredibly personal. Yeah, everyone. Wow. Everyone opinion and so personal yeah and it just it, and then got to a point where the two of us are like i can't feel anything anymore <laughs> there's only so many times we can wash our faces yeah you know we put the nuts and bolts on it on the formula we toss it you know where we can and at the end of the day like it's just one of those products that like unless we reach out to our community we don't know what they prefer yeah and then the gentle acid that was really important to us mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we really wanted to cater to people who were scared of using yeah. chemical exfoliants, maybe struggle with dry skin, more sensitive skin types. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, Gloria and I don't really have that skin yeah, type yeah. issue. So yeah. um, that was really, we, we learned a lot from that one too. Um, we were trialing some pretty heavy duty, um, but gentle molecules. Yeah. Um, and I think that really helped us solidify. It's called baby steps. So it's solidified baby steps. What's I really neat about baby steps is also, sorry, I just want to add that um, while the uh, one, the formula we didn't choose actually got slightly better ratings in terms of how uh, some of the performance aspect. Yeah. And, but yes. the people who didn't like the formula on the dingo, uh, the, uh, the people who didn't like the formula we end up choosing, they all had to say comments like, it feels a little too gentle. And we're like, yes, that's exactly yes. what we're going for. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's called baby steps. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I, I just think I, I have to congratulate you again, but specifically on obviously not only your success, but specifically on the hatchery because I've been in the you know beauty through plastic surgery, but let's just say I've been in the beauty industry for um, a long time, and it is uncommon uh, to involve the community, specifically the community you are working with and working for. It's typically 
uncommon to have them comment or be so engaged in the creative process. So I think that that's pretty brilliant. So I'm, I'm impressed by that. Uh, um, thank you. Yeah. Right, we're happy about it too. They're yeah. honestly, they, the social media can get pretty daunting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. You know, Tell me about it. I'm not so good at it. <laughs> right. But I think we've been pretty lucky with the, our community. Yeah. Yes. Good for you. Now tell me about your book, Skincare Decoded. What was the basis of it? And why did you feel it was important to write it? Hey, shout it out. Don't worry. I'll put it in the call to action on amazon.com. <laughs> Man, that was a journey. <laughs> uh, well, pretty innocently, we were actually approached by a publisher, which was a very flattering moment. Yes, um, it is. We didn't it's believe it. And we thought it was a scam. <laughs> we're like, this is not real. Yeah, it's yeah like, right? You, know, like, you just start a website and you get inquiries. It's like, oh, do you want to meet Madonna? That's how it felt. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we met up with the publisher who turned out to be real and we yeah. thought, oh, it just made a lot of sense. We are whimsical in our product creation. We're even more whimsical in our content. So yeah. at that point, it really felt like, oh, maybe we were, we were a little all over the place in terms of what we write. And it, it can be, it, it's, uh, Instagram isn't very navigation friendly. So maybe, no. uh, even though the content is there, people are hard to, uh, people can't find what they're looking for. So we thought the book is just made a lot of sense. And we were so innocent, so cute. Uh, we thought, <laughs> oh man, we wrote so much already. We just need to clean it up and put it in a book form. And we actually wound up like basically rewriting the whole thing. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. And were these, was this based on, was the rewrite based on comments from the publisher or? No, no. this is really us two. And like, <laughs> I I've said this so many times, but I'm pretty sure each of us wanted to strangle the other one at multiple <laughs> times. But it was so important and so necessary that yeah. you know, um, it's just when you when you write it and you're so deep into the writing, yeah. you just don't really see it and really relied on Gloria for the other perspective. You know, even though you're like, I can't. I cannot stomach having to rewrite this one more time. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it was it was necessary to the creative I, process. I think there are multiple nights we either scream like, who is it for? Who's reading the book? And there are days I'm like, I don't care about voice writers yeah. anymore. Do it I mean, I am not a professional writer, but I have written and edited, you know, a medical textbook. It took two years of my life. I and know, um, know, yeah, it took a long time. And um, of course, I curated other colleagues to write chapters and the follow up and hi, I need your chapter. Hi, I need your chapter. Even my chapters, the redo and the redo. Oh, my gosh. I applaud you for getting through it. It's no joke. Um, yeah. Our it's publisher no joke. was adorable. They, they were like, <laughs> oh, yeah, the writing process should take like six months. <laughs> it, took us, it took us a full year and some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that for sure. Now, if you can, and if you remember, describe the moment, perhaps during your beauty careers, you know, after you launched Chemist Confessions, any time that you decided, yeah, I'm glad I pivoted. This is my industry. This is my happy place. We are in it to win it. When was <laughs> so I, it? Has it come yet? <laughs> so I think for me, it was like seeing our first product get made. Like, mm -hmm. I think that it just kind of re solidified that, like, we can do this, you know, and, you know, we are, we're coming out with a good thing. And, um, I think that it just, you know, as two chemists, you know, that are, are innocent in the whole like entrepreneur world, like it, it can get, at least for me, a lot of times I feel like it's, you really got to fake it till you make it, you know, like yeah. how am I qualified to be making some of these decisions? And, but I think like finally seeing our product and it's like finished packaging, you know, yeah. everything's squared away. And then I knew like, Kind of that validation of like okay we can do this i i yes. think we need to do this mm -hmm. this is we're on to something and while and yeah so that would be for me yeah 
Yeah, that's fantastic. I have to say that this is something that you'll, you disagree, Gloria. Did you have a different no, moment? No, no. <laughs> I think for me, like still, still uncertain remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes like that. This is definitely a, a a personality flaw. I think that makes entrepreneurship kind of hard for me. It's like yeah. sometimes when you're in it, it's hard to celebrate the little wins yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and enjoy the journey because I think they're they, not even little. Yeah. She's just being yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a great question for me to sit there and be like, oh my God, we did do a lot. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yes, but sometimes when you're, you know, there's just so much to tackle. Sometimes it's just hard to see the good things you've already done. Yeah. I understand. But I think um, those are two very important things that you said that both of you. So celebrate the wins always, yeah. no matter what, and um, enjoy the journey. I had a previous previous podcast host, um, rather a guest, who said, you know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, and, and you just yeah. pretty much exemplified that. And the other point I wanted to raise, um, Victoria, you alluded to it without necessarily saying those the words, um, and I think unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, right? This is something that a lot of professional women, a lot of entrepreneurial women, perhaps a lot of women in general, um, sometimes get caught up with imposter syndrome. Like, oh my gosh, I mean, yeah. is this really happening? Is, you know, am I qualified to do this? I mean, oh my God, you are both beyond qualified. And um, sometimes it takes the product, the finished package, the thing, you know, the event, the award, the accolade, whatever, the 100, you know, thousand followers on, on social media. Sometimes it takes something external to validate your gifts, your talents, right? But yeah. you already have it all. Everything that you need is within. And I'm glad that you alluded to it because this is something that I struggle with also, the whole imposter syndrome thing. And um, I just think that that's something that is perhaps unique to women and women who are just, you know, doing things and getting things done. Um, and it's something that we obviously all have to work on together as a unified community. So thank you for bringing that up, even though you didn't even think you brought it up, but you did. <laughs> Real. <laughs> right, right. It's true. Let's keep it real. It is what it is. What is your hero or shall I say heroin product? Well, you know what I mean by heroin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my go to is our Aquafix. Um hmm. because I just think for me there's I have I've always had dry skin. Um, and I've used a lot of hydrating waters, um, serums, what have you, throughout the years. And for me, like, I'm sure they did something more than nothing. But as I was yes. switching from product to product, I never – and there are certain ones I would go back to, but I didn't necessarily felt like they were working. Or I was like, I think it's doing good for me, and I was never quite sure. And once I got into the industry – that was a step. That was a um, part of my routine that I kind of struggled with a lot because we mm. uh, we started I started needing to test a lot of products, and yes. without having that big that foundational routine to fall back to yet. So for me, Aquafix was that product that now, like regardless of what kind of crazy rotation I'm going through in terms of testing, <laughs> unless we're developing competitor products or just products I'm curious about, that that is like a staple that will keep my skin happy and as um, one of the only hydrating serums that to me, like, oh, if I don't use it, I can definitely feel a difference. Yeah. Wow. And and Victoria? Actually, oh, yeah. So mine is our Blank Slate Cleanser. Um, oh. It's it's a gel cleanser, low foam, um, but takes off, like, all my makeup, sunscreen, no issues. It's, it's because I'm a, a minimalist. I don't do, you know, the double cleansing method. I don't like yeah. to use have too many steps in my routine. Yeah. And uh, we actually had a customer that put it best. Five star review. Title wow. was perfectly boring cleanser. <laughs> and like I don't think she could I don't think she could have like put it best because like that couldn't have been put better because yeah. like, that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Like a cleanser should be no frills. It should yeah. be simply the job of cleansing without right. stripping. Without you stripping. And yeah. So that yeah, I would say that was my go to. Well, I cannot wait to try them. That question was really primarily for me, so I know which at least which <laughs> two to get at the least. Now, what I, I know, Victoria, you mentioned you're a minimalist. So tell me your beauty, beauty routine, and Gloria, tell me yours. Yeah, so, yep, minimalist. So it's simply um, I cleanse. I use Aquafix that Gloria mentioned, and mm -hmm. then I substitute. 
for that's the daytime routine. And then at night, um, I simply use a gel cream moisturizer. Um, it's ours, Mr. Reliable. Um, yes. <laughs> I still have, um, I still have body acne. Well, this is not really part of my face routine, but skin routine is. Yes. I still have a lot of body acne, and so I deal with. Um, so I use our specialist, um, and then I call it a day. <laughs> okay, Gloria. So three steps. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit more layer happy with my routine. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, during the day, I start with Aquafix. I will use a vitamin C, which is usually some sort of C for like on rotation. Yeah. So um, right now, it's a timeless skincare one, but I pretty much try all the C for like out there. Yeah. I've also used a few vitamin C derivatives, but um, the go-to is still ascorbic acid for me. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will use a moisturizer before my sunscreen. And the moisturizer is like heavily on rotation. There are days <laughs> that I like just using an, a face oil. Um, there are days I've tried a few heavier creams. Um, but I have found that for me, I like the heavy cream texture but yeah. they don't tend to layer very well with my sunscreen. Mm, um, so I'm still kind of experimenting with that. Um, sunscreen is also on a rotation of products I've been trying. I've been really into um, Japanese sunscreen lately. That textures work really well for me. Yeah. Um, then at night, it's, uh, I don't know. I've been experimenting a lot. <laughs> so um, my go-to is also start the foundation with Aquafix. I do a once a week um, glycolic acid peel. During okay. winter, I've been using retinol. But during, right now during summer, it's just not something I'm, I am I have the capacity, but the bandwidth to really yeah. troubleshoot. So forget yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I will use, uh, I will use a moisturizer. Right now, it's Mr. Reliable. Um, but I've also been experimenting with other brands of creams and yep. whatnot. Uh, I have found that I really need something with, and this is a suggestion we definitely make for all um, skin types is, yes. but for all dry skin types is uh, a lot of times people don't realize that you definitely, you can make a cream creamy without actually using a lot of occlusives, but definitely decode that ingredient. Make sure you find that petrolatum, shea butter, whatever yep. it is that you it's like. Rare. Yeah. 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 So oh, I gosh, definitely yeah. use a, a cream with those occlusives in it. Um, and then I might need to spot treat because sometimes it gets a little peely in these. I put the with the Jafara mustache, so I'm like, oh, it's a little peely here. So I'll use a balm on these spots. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. everything a lot more complicated than Victoria's. Not at all complicated, but just, you know, minimalist and, you know, kind of sort of maximalist. <laughs> Yeah, I also I, dry skin. I feel like people they gotta like find their methods, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I, it's true. It's a lot harder. It's yeah. very true. And I like the fact that you mentioned Gloria. You know, spring, winter, summer, whatever. Because I definitely uh, use products in rotation, and many times I will um, modify or alter them based on the season. Mm -hmm. In yeah. addition to you know waking up I, my routine is i wake up in the morning i look in the mirror i'm like okay what's my skin telling me what i eat last night what i did i drink last night you know mm -hmm. am i dehydrated and based on that it's like okay let's let's you know <laughs> magic <laughs> let's figure yeah. it out yeah and and then, post drinking skincare is like embalm yourself I'm just know. so dehydrated <laughs> Right? Your skin just <laughs> drinks it up, just like your stomach drank it up the night before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on beauty devices? You know, the, the at-home, do-it-yourself mm -hmm. kind of exfoliation. Do you use them? And if so, do you have a favorite? What are your thoughts on beauty devices? Oh, sure. First thing I thought is um, don't don't micro needle at home. Those needles are really <laughs> You yeah, yeah. At home, especially, yeah. I know for a fact that there are people out there that we use it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely not a good idea. Um, in terms of devices, um, I think the entry level is probably all sorts of cleansing devices. Um, I think cleansing devices are great. They do really get in there deeply. Um, don't feel, I wouldn't say feel the need to use them every day. Um, but also be real with yourself whether or not you're going to use it because I haven't yeah. seen my uh, Clarisonic charger since like 2015. So. <laughs> yeah. um, and then in terms of more serious devices, I personally had experience with, um, I think Tria has a hair removal laser and also <laughs> anti-aging um, device. 
Honestly, for me, I'm very lukewarm about those because those yeah. devices, like, yeah, sure, in the long term, they're cheaper than in-office treatments, but I yeah. don't think most people can get the most out of the machines. I've done in-office la uh, laser hair removal treatments, so I'm like, oh, yeah. great, I have my hands on this trio. This yeah. will be my touch-up. My pain tolerance when you're <laughs> operating that on yourself is just, <laughs> you become the biggest wuss ever. <laughs> like, in-office, you're like, you need numbing cream? I'm like, nah, just do it. Yeah. But when wow. I'm using it myself, I'm like, oh my god, one's up, I'm done. <laughs> so that's my experience and my take on devices. I totally agree. Like sometimes, you know, the idea a lot of these devices will never compete with the strength of an in-office device. And so Clearly. Yeah, yeah. And so, yes, while you can kind of, you know, you do the math and you realize, well, one, if I buy this device, it will cost me two procedures, you know, mm -hmm. at at in office, right? But right. If you think about it, you have to diligently use that device like yes. all year yeah. to really see that benefit. Whereas, you know, with hair removal, I have also subjected myself <laughs> to the late <Lakers laughs> thing. I'd rather just get this done in four in-office sessions yeah. than, you know, try to zap myself every other <laughs> night. You know? so I, I, you know, I'm definitely for the in-office, but, you know, I... I agree with the cleansing devices. They can be mechanical exfoliation sometimes can be really helpful when you have very stubborn blackheads. Mm -hmm. um, so that in, and also can really help, um, you know, reach areas like, especially in your eyes, like the crevices for makeup. So yeah. anything that assists with good cleansing is great. Um, and then I am currently really interested in microcurrent. Um, yes. I, I've heard so many good things. Um, just there's not a lot of research around it, like not enough like robust data around it right. yet, but I think there's definitely something there. And um, I've heard really good things about the new face um, yeah. device. So that's one that I'm, I'm curious about, but don't know a lot about. Um, but as I far as, like, yeah, I was gonna say, as far as microneedling, micro laser, de laser devices especially, um, I'd rather do it in office. I, I was going to say I'll keep you posted on you know that new face device because yeah. I too am very excited yeah. about um, the microcurrent especially if it can just lift a little bit <laughs> it's hard, it's hard right? to achieve lifting with top oh my now. gosh yeah I and you know what as a plastic surgeon I'm all about yeah just come to the office let's go to the operating room and let's just I'm get sure, it done yeah I'm sure but Frank know. But frankly, plastic surgery is not on, you know, not on everyone's radar. It's not a part right. of everyone's beauty philosophy. And I respect that. Um, so while I don't think the at home devices will <clears throat> ever give you clinical results, right. I do think that they're, they're, you know, a good way to try to prep <laughs> for, mm -hmm. a, you know, upcoming procedure or to yeah. try to maintain on a minimal level what you did get from a procedure. So we have yet to see, but the field is definitely you know, exciting. Can I ask you, Dr. Shirley, I, yeah, I want to thank you because I have a burning question about Botox. I want to yeah. know, <laughs> know if microdosing Botox, um, <laughs> have you heard anything about that in terms of- I know of all about it. <laughs> yeah, I, so I've been like kind of tracking it. I want, I've been trying to look for like review papers, but that is the one thing that I am like, it just the in theory, it sounds like it should be helpful, but I really yes. wanted to hear from you. So Botox is one of those things that it it is, you know, in one way is dose dependent, right? Mm -hmm. So if you give very little, you have a little effect. But if you give a higher dose, you have a bigger effect because you know how it works, right? It competes mm -hmm. for the receptor, et cetera. And so micro dosing Botox, depending on the result or the effect that you're looking for, can be very helpful. The mm -hmm. caveat is that because it is a micro dose, it is a smaller dose, it's not highly concentrated necessarily. So mm -hmm. whatever result that you do get from it, it may not be long lived and it may mm -hmm. not last you as long. But if you're willing to accept that and you're looking for a softer, sub more subtle result, then mm -hmm. it's a possibility, right? So you always have to match your expectations to what the procedure can actually do for you. Right. And so, you know, you hear about 20 year olds talking about microdosing yes. as right. a technique. I wanted to know if that's, is that something that you, I hate to say recommend, but is that something that is common? Um, not in my practice. 
It is common. I am very well aware that microdosing happens in 20-ish year olds. It is not common in my practice. um, And I think part of the reason is because I brand my practice as holistic plastic surgery. So Mm -hmm. I I tend to uh, recommend other things before necessarily going to the needle or the knife or the scalpel. And while I love the needles and I adore the scalpel, I just think that at certain um, ages and stages in life, depending on what the person, you know, brings to the table, you know, genetics, lifestyle, et cetera, you know, diet, microbiome, the whole thing. I think that perhaps, you know, early participation in some of those procedures, you know, is not necessarily one of the top things that I would recommend. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I've and and really you know, people hear from <laughs> the doctor about this, you know, especially in as a, yeah, as a dermatologist or an um in cosmetic surgery. So yeah. 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 And believe me, I've seen 20 year olds who have the deepest furrows. And when I mm-hmm. ask, well, where did this come from? How stressed are you? Is, does this run in your family? And then they show me pictures of their mother and their aunt and their grandmother. And they all had them. I'm like, okay, well, maybe ah. you might, you might want to check out some Botox <laughs> yeah. and plus minus filler. But you know, if you're 21 and it's just starting to show up, ah, you know, yeah. I usually present other options and I allow the person to make the best decision for themselves because even though I provide information and I provide education, um, I certainly am not in the business of telling people exactly what to do. Right? I make recommendations. I make suggestions. I value your, you know, how you perceive your highest self and your most beautiful self. And I'm here to help you achieve that. Yeah. Awesome. That was a little plug for Dr. Shirley Madeir, elementsandgraces.com. <laughs> we'll, we'll come by your office sometime. <laughs> Ladies, well, you've been listening to part one of the Forever Fab podcast, my interview with Gloria Fu. And shit, did I actually fuck that up? <laughs> It's Gloria Lou. <laughs> you were waiting for it. I'm going to do that over Fela. Scratch that. The Fulu duo. Yeah. The Fulu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And you know what? It's so crazy because I was like, I'm not going to do that. And I did it. Anyway, you've been listening. Right? You've been listening to part one of the Forever Fab podcast with my guest, Gloria Lou and Victoria <laughs> Fu of Chemist Confessions. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned for part two. To shop the skincare line, visit chemistconfessions.com. And when you do shop online, use the special discount code CCXFAB. That's Chemist Confections with FAB. CCXFAB for 20% off of your purchases on chemistconfessions.com. Visit at Chemist Confessions on Instagram for more skincare transparency. And to purchase their book, Skincare Decoded, go to Amazon.com. You've just listened to part one of Forever Fab Podcast. Please stay tuned for part two coming up next.